together, one big give butter fam. And y'all, I got a confession to make. This is probably one of my favorite days of every single month. And we have one of the best guests in the house, y'all. I am so excited. We're going to talk about all things storytelling. Okay, so if y'all didn't guess, I was asking y'all, what song... What song is, is that? What movie? I'm sorry, was that song featured in? It's called Life Is a Highway. What movie is it from? Come on, I want to see it. I want cars. That's right. Exactly. Oh, come on, all y'all know Vroom Vroom. Come on, that's what I'm talking about. I love to see it, y'all. Well, y'all, one thing that I loved, and one thing that I love about today's session is all about storytelling. And when you think about a story, you get a feeling. When I think about Cars, I know exactly where I was when I watched that movie. And some of y'all, I saw Love Jones in there. I see Clouds in there. I see the Shawshank Redemption. When you think about a good story, it brings you to a place. And when you go to that place, it compels you to act, right? And we're going to talk about how do you use a magic and how to use the power of storytelling to get your donors and get your community to act, okay? Because that's what we all want at the end of the day we want active participants come on y'all we don't want just bystanders in the house we want active participants and how you get them active is by actively telling your story so if y'all don't know me by oh, what's that song if you don't know me by now y'all if you don't know me by now we in july okay so we need you to go ahead and watch a couple videos or something y'all because we need to figure this out okay but my name is floyd jones i'm the host who does the most okay i oversee community and partnerships here at give butter i love working with small organizations okay I changed my fun fact to I've been to over 18 countries, but my real fun fact is that I just moved into my new apartment in the city and I absolutely love it, okay? It's like my first time being in an apartment in New York where I found like my dream spot. And if you live in New York or in another crowded city, you know what I'm talking about. It's a fight, okay? The, the real estate is a situation, but we powered through. I told my story and I got them to give it to me. Come on, somebody. So anyway, that's what I'm happy about and that's what's bringing me joy. Connect with me on LinkedIn. You already know we keep the conversation going and we keep the conversation um, popping. We put a little uh, um, QR code here because we're hit and we'll bring that back towards the end as well. For those of you who don't know Give Butter, who are just joining in, Give Butter is the number one rated platform on G2. We like to call ourselves the most loved nonprofit because aren't you feeling the love right now? I know I'm feeling the love. I am. Jacqueline's feeling the love. Come on now. Hey, Illinois in the house. I love to see it. But y'all, we are the most loved nonprofit fundraising platform, and we are focused on bringing you an end-to-end -end fundraising solution, everything to raise more funds, connect with your donors, engage with them on a deeper level, and so much more. And y'all, we got even more fun updates coming for you. I can't spill the beans right now, but just stay connected, stay in tune with me, and let me tell you, it's going to be a buttertastic summer, y'all. Some... Fun little updates, we have a summer fundraising checklist. So I know y'all know about the summer slump, okay? And sometimes we see the donations start to dwindle, but y'all, our team has put together the most amazing checklist for you, okay? Look, check it out, see our tips and tricks to get the fundraising going, but most importantly, to keep your um, audience engaged year round, okay? I my, One of my biggest pet peeves, don't contact me only when you want money, okay? Don't call me only when you want some, something from me, okay? Contact me year round, tell me what's going on. What are you doing this summer? Like, I wanna know, okay? But here are some easy tips and tricks to get your people activated this summer, connect with them on a deeper level, and again, keep that energy flowing. Gracious, drop the link, check it out, y'all. All right, so you know the drill. The recording and slides will be emailed to you. Oh my God, Aria, how are you, good friend? It's so good to see you. Come on, Common Great is in the house, y'all. Good to see you, Aria. But y'all, the recording and the slides are gonna be emailed to you when the webinar is over. Your friends are gonna who join late are gonna ask, so help us spread the word and let them know, yes, the recording and the slides will be sent out because this is too good not to share, okay? Please use the Q&A and chat to ask questions. We always get a ton of questions at the end. So use the Q&A, use emojis. You already know the drill. Keep the chat kind of res um, respectful and make sure you're chatting to everyone and not just post some panelists, okay? Um, but let me, let me, y'all, I have, I have two amazing people that I cannot wait to introduce to you all. Let me bring y'all up, okay? Let me bring y'all up, spotlight. Okay, and let me spotlight myself as well. Add a spotlight. Okay, 
Can y'all can y'all see Jason and Matt? Jason and Matt, can y'all see me? I think y'all are on mute. Let me ask y'all to unmute. Can y'all hear? Can you hear me? Wow, let there be sound. Come on. All right. Me. We love it, y'all. <laughs> y'all, I have two of the most amazing people that I've ever got to meet. Jason and Matt run the organization Beard and Bowler. Everything that you could ever need for all of your fundraising and filmmaking needs. Come on, somebody. They help nonprofits raise funds and awareness through storytelling. Okay. They do same day video edits, they do impact videos, they do that perfect fundraising moment. You already know when you're at the gala and people want to hear that good old story, who you gonna call? Beard and bowler. Okay. And they do follow-up videos that capture that second gift. Welcome to the stage, y'all. Thank you so much for having us. There is literally no way we could follow that energy. I love it. Every time you bring it, and we're just going to, we're going to try it. It's though. the best introduction I've ever had. <laughs> we're we're going to okay. try it. I asked everybody else what their favorite movie was, but what is your favorite movie? That is a good one. I like the original Predator from Ooh. the 80s with Arnold Schwarzenegger, particularly because you don't see the villain or the monster until like the very end. They hold that tension so well. So um, that we'll get into that later, but that's why. I, you just gave me anxiety. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he's sitting next to you. So watch out now. Not I know I have, uh, I'm surrounded by like cinematographers and like actual video people. So I'm going to get this wrong. Right. Yeah. They're you, all telling you, you could just, you could just. <clears throat> um, I don't know. I'm old school. I like the, I like the Godfather. But it's because the memories attached to it, you know, Come on. it's the memories that's attached to it. So I love yeah. that. I love that. First of all, I'm going to hand things over to you guys so you can share the screen. But I just want to give a moment, a, a moment of appreciation for this video quality. Come on, somebody. We ain't going to talk about storytelling and not talk about some good video quality. So we love that. Yeah, but y'all, I'm going to let y'all take the reins so our yeah, people can angles. get into it. OK, um, feel free to start your video and then I'll spotlight the other one. OK. OK, I need to start video, right? Let's see, let me stop share, start my video. Okay. Good. Should I be filling this with witty banter? <laughs> <laughs> I should yes. be filling this with witty banter. Uh, yeah. Oh, all Do the stories that are coming from my, no, I don't. I have angry rants. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to just hear your, your witty banter now. So. No one, no, we want it. This is a very positive place. So it's. Okay, I think we're good. Whew, that was Can a lot you guys. Of Hopefully you can see my screen. I can see the chat, so just drop a uh, thumbs up. Good. Oh, good. Yes, yeah, so we can see the screen. All right, so uh, Jason Ellinger, Matt Carpenter, we are Beard and Bowler, commercial filmmakers who help nonprofits raise funds and awareness to the power of storytelling via video. As Floyd said, the like the mission moment right before the big ask at a gala is our specialty. And uh, that's who we are and what we do. Um, now I think I'm gonna start with our story. I, I want to know if anybody saw the video that they made me shoot to promote this thing. I don't know if you saw it. Drop it in the chat if you saw it. It was on, uh, it was on there. Floyd, I don't know. Jason got Floyd on the phone. I was not part of the creative conference. I'm the creative <laughs> director. And they're like, oh, I got this great. And I walk in here to uh, uh, film this. What I figure is just going to be a, I'm going to look normal and professional, like an adult, you know, a grown adult man. And they have a Full on butter costume, and I don't. It, it's. Uh, <laughs> we'll have to drop the link into that. For gonna, later. It's I don't be on my link. Less but people need yeah, to see it. You're, he is in a full on butter costume, and it is. It's on my LinkedIn. If you find me on LinkedIn, Jason Ellinger on LinkedIn. We'll have the QR code later. But if you find me on LinkedIn, uh, it's there. Like it's today's post of me. I don't. <laughs> you just have a very intense personality, so it just people naturally gravitate to doing. All that right. Too. Whenever we have game night, he's the first one to go. Everyone tries to kill him. They're just like, let's get rid of this guy, even if it's Monopoly. This is my life. <laughs> All right. So uh, our story begins in, in 2007. Uh, started a video production company just in time for that recession. Um, so that was a fun few years to navigate. And uh, it, was a, it was a tough, tough time for us. Um, fast forward, uh, I'm getting married, needed uh, some stable income. And uh, I got a day job with the news. Um, it was, as you may be seeing right now, this is me back in 07, 09, me getting married. Um, 
and I needed a bit more stable income. So what I did was I got a day job with the news and I had the 4 a.m. to noon shift. And every day it was fires, shootings, stabbings, murders, like the worst of the worst for the tri-state area. And uh, it just really started taking a toll on me. I think the worst part or my, my downfall was when I saw my, uh, when I was at my second 11 year old's funeral and uh, the reporter just kind of nudged me and said, go get the mom, go interview the mom uh, without just even looking up or anything, just kind of really cold. And as I'm sitting there interviewing this weeping mom who just lost her son, I'm still sitting there kind of justifying it to myself. Like, hey, maybe somebody will see this. Maybe somebody will learn. Maybe I won't be back here again. And the very next month, week, day, I was back there again. So I started meeting with with uh, a, a guide. We'll call him a guide. He was my Yoda. And uh, he he said to me, you're doing video. You're doing the news. I still have my business. What would you want to do? Um, and I said, well, you know, video, really. He's like, make money, make a living, right? He's like, let me rephrase a question. If money were no object, what would you want to do with your life? And I immediately thought of a, a guy by the name of Willie. He's in one of the worst areas of New Jersey, across from two burned down buildings. And he decided to start his own community garden. And things wouldn't even grow in there. The, the dirt was toxic. He had to bring in his own dirt to just start this farm. Seven years old, starts his own community garden nonprofit, has a full-time job, mind you. He mentors kids from the area, brings them in, shows them how to work the dirt and the earth with their hands, and, and is a light in a very dark area. And something funny started happening um, with, with Willie. Once we were there, once he was there, the community around him started changing. The, the burned down buildings from across the street became thriving stores. There's a community fridge that was installed. And I, I turned to my guide, my Yoda, and I said, that's it. That's what I would do. That's the story I would tell all day, every day. And he kind of said to me, me too, but there's no money in that. <laughs> How are we going to do this? If you haven't figured it out by now, uh, Matt, he was my guide. He was my my Yoda, so to speak. And we sat there and we plotted and we planned and we started with our why. That was the important part, the how we're going to do this um, and the why we're going to do this. And then we reverse engineered it and figured out how to make a living at it and found a comfortable niche with inside, I'd say nonprofits that that have events and galas are, are usually where we have a comfortable niche at. But that was kind of our inspiration and our catalyst for starting Beard and Bowler officially in 2016. Um, so that's that's our story. Yeah. And that's what kind of led us to to. Here. So what's interesting is, and maybe it was because of the technology that we were trying to, you, you made a couple mistakes in telling your story. I made a lot of mistakes. You did, well, <laughs> not, not in terms of the facts and the way, but the way that it was put together and then, you know, stating things. In fact, uh, these are pretty common mistakes. And this, that wasn't, he actually did make mistakes. This is not something you're playing with, which I'm going to hear about later because I don't have an internal monologue. So I just <laughs> say things. Um, so sorry for throwing you under the bus there. Uh, but we actually want to talk to you today a little bit about some of the biggest mistakes and constant mistakes that we see over and over again when organizations try to capture stories, share stories. Um, we'll talk about the biggest mistakes and then Floyd, Floyd told us we had to have solutions. So don't just tell them the problem, tell them the way to fix it. He said, it's yes. all about, you know, you guys. So, uh, you know, Floyd gets what Floyd wants. Yes. Yes. Indeed. Now, the reason we did this, and I think we can skip this slide too. The reason we did this, because uh, there's a right way and there's a wrong way to tell stories, right? And uh, if you follow the right method, you'll keep people from beginning to end. So we're actually going to skip over the why of video, because if you're here, you pretty much are already convinced that you need video. What we want to do is talk to you about the biggest mistakes in using video, and then we'll give you what to do instead. All right. So you want to start with the first one? Yes. The message isn't clear, right? So we like to say, I know some people say content is king, but it's it's not clarity is king. Make sure you're clear and concise with your message. A confused mind doesn't buy. Any any Donald Miller fans out there, drop like a hand or a thumb in the chat, like he's the story king. So uh, he also didn't invent this, by the way. But uh, number one, a confused mind doesn't buy. Clarity is king. Keep your message clear and concise. Um, yeah, I think that's good. And I'll even add to that because we'll get to the what to do. Um, 
the next biggest problem is people very, very, very frequently miscast the hero of the story, the person who has the problem and needs to find the solution. We find it with businesses. They cast themselves as the hero, right? My business solves your problems. We find it with um, nonprofits. They cast themselves as the hero. Awesome. And, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and so people cast the wrong hero of the story. When, when we watch video, we self-select. We, we watch and we put ourselves in those people's shoes. Uh, people aren't looking for you to be the hero. People are looking for how you make them the hero of their own stories. And so mis, mis choosing or miscasting the hero of the story is a, is a big mistake because you lose a lot of people right out the gate. Stating the problem too late. Um, this is probably one of the most important things. And whenever I get on discovery calls with new clients, I tell them the most critical thing that you can do in any story is clearly articulate the problem. That's the most critical thing that you can do. Most important by far. But it's even, it's even more than that. You guys have heard of the three second rule when, with social media, right? You have three seconds to grab somebody's attention. The same is true with video. If you don't state the problem within the first 10 seconds of a video, uh, people don't know what they're watching, why they're watching it, and they, they don't care. Um, and so there's a way to kind of get to that quickly. We'll get to that in a minute. Yes. I almost, I want to say the don't answer. Don't give it away. <laughs> I keep forgetting like, I'm gonna we count, have that I'm gonna slide count next. Tables. <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, making it too difficult to act, give, or buy. Uh, you have to make it, oh, I'm not going to get into that. Anything to add on this one? Making it too difficult to act. Um, no, because back. then that's the answer of what to do, right? Yeah. Uh, so let's just leave it there. Yeah, let's leave that one there. That's fun. Uh, not explaining what's at risk. And this is one. Of this is the problem that you made in favorites. telling your story. Yes. Yeah. I didn't explain what was at risk. Right. So uh, do we want to get to some solutions? Um, well, we have one more biggest mistake because there's, yeah, there there's are six. six. Yep solving the problem back to the problem quickly back to the problem this is a good the one. timing of when you state the problem and end the problem is massive in your storytelling in your video for your organization for that heartfelt moment and so getting the timing wrong really ruins the power of a video so those are the biggest mistakes let's move on to some solutions you guys want to see some solutions thumbs up if you want to see some solutions no one wants to see solutions. No Do it anyway. No one wants to see solutions. Okay. Forget you people. <laughs> oh yeah, we got one solution. Maybe I shouldn't okay. say that. I shouldn't say. It. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, uh, the message of the video isn't clear. Choose one story. Yeah. Um, like I said, clarity is king, and we like to follow one storyline. And I just got off a new a discovery call with a new prospect la yesterday, and they were asking, "Well, we need to tell." all of what we do and, and a lot of times people try and make this comprehensive piece where they don't understand the job of your videos just to do one thing and it's move people emotionally on, enough move that emotional needle enough so that they want to take an action yeah, yeah uh, organizations like to list everything that they do because they feel it's their one chance to really get in front of people and we tell people this all the time your video is not the only conversation it's not the end of a conversation it's the start of your conversation with people and so pick one program pick one story and tell that very clearly right it's not your last opportunity people will remember that and then if you're a fundraiser you obsess about that follow-up gift the second gift really getting them in if you can capture just a fraction of the heart um and with with one very clear, very well told story, it will lead to the other things. It will build into a further conversation. So there's a lot of fear around that. Pick one story. Miscasting the hero of the story. Pre-interviews pre are key. And this is something that we do on all of our professional shoots. Um, before you go and you set up a camera or even your iPhone to interview somebody, just take 20 minutes and do a Zoom call with them, a pre-interview. You'll understand so much more about the story arc. And then most importantly, the most important reason, the reason why we started doing pre-interviews is to make sure that they can clearly articulate the problem, the most important part of the video. If they can't clearly articulate it or if they were like, ah, yeah, you know, I was kind of all right. And they came along and they helped me out a little bit, but 
eh, no biggie. <laughs> That's not going to make for like anything really compelling. So pre interviews are key. Make sure they can clearly articulate the. Problem. You almost hit me with your hands. I'm sorry. I'm very aggressive. Very ex uh, expressive. I'll tell you this too. People self select, right? We were dealing with that very briefly. So if you know your donor base and you're saying we're primarily, you know, like moms in their 30s or 40s or 50s, whatever, if you know your donor group, the hero of your story should reflect some of that or should have some sort of attachment to that. So uh, especially in your mission moment videos, if you want to get the biggest audience, you've got to capture their heart and have them feel as if they're part of that story. Now, I know that's difficult for different things. Um, but if you really are just like, how do we make people care about rocks? Call me. We'll talk for half an hour. All right. <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, next one. Stating the problem too late. I don't think you can see the slides are progressing. Okay. We only see the. So what should you do to the slide? Okay. So, uh, we'll just tell you what it is. So the problem was stating the problem too late. How do we fix that? Uh, so we like something called a cold open. Uh, cold open is when, as the minute the video opens, the minute, the minute it starts, it's someone stating the problem very, very clearly. It's attention getting, it is disruptive, and it already drags them in because now they know what the problem is. So where's this gonna go? Um, easy examples of this, you got one? Uh, for cold opens? Yeah. Uh, I think one of my favorite ones is actually a PR agency. Um, and they had a, should I go into like what he actually said for the cold open? No, no. we're going to do my, we're going to do my <laughs> example say, because it's it. shorter. Yeah. All go. right. Uh, we had, we have this one video um, that we actually showed recently where you see a young woman say, essentially say, say um, my baby's heart rate was dropping. We didn't know if there was, there really was any hope and it just cuts into the video from there. And so, and you, we, you know, you keep, we teed it with proper heart rate monitor sound and all that stuff as well. Um, it, it immediately grabs your attention. Oh, there's a baby. It's life is at risk. And then we proceeded to develop the story afterwards. So it's your most dramatic, most impactful statement. Yep. And it doesn't have to have a whole lot of context. That's actually how I got hooked on Gary V. Just one of his cold opens on his blog was just like, whoa, what's happening next? And there's no context. I just, I didn't know anything. I just- It's a cheat. It Cold opened open up a cheat. It opened up a curiosity loop. Yep. And that's very important when you're- doing The video. rule of thumb with video is the first 10 seconds. If you don't state the problem within the first 10 seconds, you've lost people. You've lost a large percentage of your audience. And one of the reasons that people do that is because they think they need to introduce themselves. And so we always tell people this as well. You don't need intros, use lower thirds. Uh, just little text that kind of flows in. It's very simple in any video editor to do that. You don't need to say the person's yes. name Hi, or I'm their Jan, position. I'm 46 and I am this. You've lost people already. Yep. If they're scrolling on social, you've lost them. If they're on a website, you might even lose them at an event with that. So save all that information. You absolutely lose them at an event. For a lower third. Yeah. Uh, making it too difficult to act by GIF. Solution the easiest cta so i'm very passionate about this one we i always tell people try and choose one cta it's very important don't start with your logo don't end with your logo after your dramatic close and your resolution one simple call to action not follow buy invest donate this that and the other over here on this shit like one action what do you want me to do from here one simple action should cold opens, everyone says Elizabeth has a great question, so I had to lean in. Should cold opens be people, graphics, or words? Uh, I would I would go people first, because people buy from people and act from people. Words, if they're short. So if you're a wordsmith person out there and you like to write a lot, which is me, you should not be writing the slides. <laughs> um, but yeah, pe people is usually the best for a cold open, because that's people people want to attach themselves to someone and or something. Yes. Not explaining what is at risk. This is one of my favorite. I didn't finish talking about okay, the easiest CTA. You, what is the CTA? Okay, we so I, I'm <laughs> trying, but this is important. Uh, after you play your video, you have roughly 10 seconds to ask people for something. So make it one thing. Two, if you're doing this at an, at an event, whoever is going to get up afterwards, I'm telling you this, if it's a good story, they will feel compelled to comment or to ease the tension by being like, whew. Wasn't that a good thing? All of you know someone you need to show this to, right? Who 
that was a story and make a comment about what they just watched. Big mistake. You actually see a percentage drop off of people engaging in that moment when someone comes up and eases the tension, allow the tension and just have them do the mission moment ask. That's why we need you to give and then sit down, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, after our videos end, it is, you've got like 30 seconds to ask I said the people 10. for whatever you want. 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds to ask the people whatever. We actually have the people stand in there who are in the video up on stage and then, okay, that's why. Drop the mic. That's it. Keep Throw it the mic if you Throw want. Throw the mic. Okay. Not explaining. Depends on how good the video what's is. What's at risk? The next one here. Uh, wait for the emotion. Hold the tension. Yeah. I love to ask this question on set and then I'll let you fill in. Uh, what is at risk? Yeah. And, and that's my favorite question to ask. But we save that for a very particular moment. Uh, what moment is that? Um, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm holding the tension. <laughs> you scared, uh, dude. <laughs> so after the, a person gets emotional, when you're like, well, what would have happened if this if this positive thing never took place? All of a sudden, there's this thing in their minds that goes back to like, I wouldn't have my kids. I wouldn't. I'd still be addicted. I, you know, I would be in, in jail. I might be dead. And the realization of that moment after you've stated that, knowing what's at risk, um, brings out that the genuine emotion in people. That is probably one of the most resonating things that people will see. You have to make sure to state the that thing that's at risk if the person doesn't act or doesn't decide to uh, shift and change their life or go with your organization or wherever that case might be. That's good enough. Cool. Uh, here you go. Two fifty of me. That'd be crazy. Okay, so solving the problem too quickly. Yes. Toy Story. Wait for it. What does this mean? <laughs> can they see the slide? Uh, yes, they can. I won't see go the into the example. I won't go into the example of this. Um, I can do that. Does anybody remember what happened? I was doing it for time purposes. After Buzz and Woody drop into the car in Toy Story at the end of Toy Story. That's it, right? Roll credits. I'll answer it for you. Wrong. There's actually a little scene at the end. There's the scene the lines, at the man. end. Sean, <laughs> you're stealing all the lines. <laughs> this was his line, but I need some more lines. Go ahead. More lines. There's a scene at the end where Buzz and Woody are sitting on the bed and it's Christmas. Andy has moved into his new house exactly and they hear, what could possibly be worse than a Buzz Lightyear? And then they hear barking in the background. Cuts to black. No one remembers that when we do these uh, in-person talks because the tension has been relieved as soon as Buzz and Woody find their way back home. And Pixar's are genius at this, and they hold that tension till minutes before credits. So they actually ran a study on this uh, for people if they could remember the end of a movie. Um, and I forget it was a Pew study. It was conducted overseas, but they picked some of the most popular movies that had been seen over the last decade. And they said, what happens after and then fill in the blank, just like Jason did with Toy Story. And what they found was less than 7% of the people polled were able to tell them with any detail and, uh, and being correct, what happened after the problem had been solved. And so um, we tell people, you, you, you hold that, that tension of the problem not being solved. Will that person live? Will it, will it come through? Hold it until you absolutely have to give it up and then end the video quickly because people now that the problem's solved you, you kind of just lean back and you have that deep sigh moment and you actually your brain stops retaining details so very good all right so now from power tick uh ticks. power ticks power ticks yep that's tips power. and tricks combined power ticks <laughs> Did not want or running one of those in the woods <laughs> Power tips and tricks for uh, shooting video because we mentioned that we'd give you some trips. Um, uh, trips. It's fine, just power through. Power through, there you go, I like that. So I think uh, I'll go through these five really, really quickly. Um, and uh, number one, this is what I learned from the news and why a lot of the reporters like to be paired with me as a camera operator because angles are your best friend. And uh, if you are shooting down, up, it, it creates a power pose, but it also adds a lot of weight and it's not a great look for you. So you want to be, uh, and if you shoot too high up, if you shoot too high up and look down, it kind of diminishes your story and what you're saying. So you kind of want to be at uh, eye level, just above eye level shooting down. 
That's usually the perfect angle. This will work for your Zoom calls. This will work for uh, shooting any self-shot video. This will work for yep. social media. This will work for pictures. Um, use natural light. Do you want me to just go through all these? Yeah, I don't. I, yeah. yeah. Okay. So number two, you're use pretty <laughs> natural light. And I'm pretty because we have a lot of natural light in here. We have artificial light in here, but we try very hard to make it look natural. Uh, basically, you do not want to be shooting in front of a window. Uh, cameras nowadays have what's called an auto iris that will shut down if you shoot it at a window because it's it's detecting that it's too bright outside. So you're going to be silhouetted. And I see a lot of people on Zoom calls in front of their window and they just look dark, right? Even in videos with interviews, you want to be in a room with the window. You don't want the window in the shot. You want the natural light to be reflected yeah. in. You need a very powerful light yeah. or lights to compete with the sun. And, uh, you know, it's not always practical. So what you can do is make sure the window, you are facing the window and the light is coming in. Maybe put a curtain on it for some soft lighting and uh, the lighting will come in and give you a nice soft feel to you. And it actually kind of hides the wrinkles and, the, and all the details in your skin if you have a good lighting source. Um, rule of thirds. Number three, yeah. uh, if you actually go, if you have an iPhone, you can go into your camera settings and turn on what's called a grid. Look this up, turn on grid in iPhone camera. This will break your camera apart into three different sections. One, two, three here, and then one, two, three here. The idea is you wanna be dead center of those lines, or if you're doing an interview, let's say that's looking off to the right, you wanna be in the left third of the video or the right third of the video. It's just symmetrically pleasing to our eyes. So it's just a good thing to keep in mind. We, the way those grids line up, you wanna put something very important there, even in a still photo. Um, so the fourth one, choose the right music. You may have some. Yeah, I'll, this I'll one. do this one briefly. Uh, without getting into the nerdy stuff, um, the music is very, very, very important. Uh, the wrong track, um, it, it just steals from the power of what's being said. Uh, something that's too aggressive or too loud or too, too, too much of an upbeat, too corporate. It, it will uh, detra distract from what people are saying. Um, it will change the mood and the tone. Um, and so spend almost as much time picking the track as choosing the sound bites for your story. Uh, it, it makes a massive difference and get feedback about like, what did this, you know, like, how did you see? And the funny thing is, and our editors will tell you this all the time, you're going to find the song and you're going to be like, oh, that's the song. That's, the, that's the right one. So try a few tracks and whatever, whatever one you're like, that really hits the tone massively important for a impact video for a powerful video. The track is big. Last one. Do not forget about your audio quality. Audio is the most critical thing that you can do technically when you're shooting. Um, people will pay attention with a bad out of focus shot, but we just physically cannot pay attention yeah. if the audio is. Think about when we lost audio and everybody freaked out in the chat or then it started echoing and stuff. Imagine if you had to listen to us on an echo the whole time. You just, you'd click off the call because we can't tolerate it. So make sure your audio is clean. Pay attention to something we call room tone in the film industry, where we'll actually pause for 10 seconds to see if we hear any air conditioning, any lawnmowers outside. Well, I, we've actually been on set where we've had to, one of our creative directors had to pay the landscaping company next door to stop mowing the lawn because we wanted clean audio, right? They came a hundred bucks, go to lunch early, right? So like, these are things you want to pay attention to. A loud fridge, it may have to be unplugged uh, if you if you were trying to get really clean sound. If you're in a bathroom or a kitchen, the walls, if you ever notice, it gets very echo echoey. You can tell if somebody goes into the kitchen or a bathroom when you're on the phone because the sound changes, the room tone changes, and sound is bouncing off the very hard walls. So in the industry, we use what's called sound blankets to deaden the sound and absorb things. Uh, but if you don't have that, regular blankets and towels will, will work fine. If you have to record in a space with hard walls and floors, you can put them on the floor um, or you can drape them over something. Uh, that actually helps dramatically with your sound. Cushions, pillows, all sorts of things. So. I think we end this and then we can get into the questions a little bit quicker. Yeah. Uh, Cause I think the questions are gonna be the most important. Yeah. I would, this the the purpose of this slide. You have to actually stop sharing. If we, you just, I said we should stop sharing. 
Oh, I was thinking you're actually going to. <laughs> there <guy>. you go. <laughs> um, you you have permission if so you're like, how do I film this? You have permission to use use your phone. Uh, here can be expensive. You know, everybody knows somebody that has a camera. Doesn't mean that it's the right camera, it's the right lens, it's the right fill in the blank. Phones are actually some of the um, they have some of the best quality in them already. And so if you need to film something on a budget, we want to give you permission to use your phone to do it. Just make sure that you're catching really clean audio. Yes. And you know what we do when we have tens of thousands of dollars of equipment and we're on set, but we need social for ourselves. Break out the iPhone yep. and we go around set. That's like your best friend when you're there and you just need to document versus creating something new. The phone is literally the only piece of equipment they let me touch because I break things and not intentionally, just by my personality in my hands, <laughs> things break. So I can tell you from experience, we'll we'll film stuff and then you know our our editors will be like, oh, this shot's really good. And I'll be like, I got that with my phone. How is your fifty thousand dollar red camera treating you now, punk? And so uh, um, you have permission to use your phone. All right, cool. I'm just going to end on this one slide before q and A. I'll, I'll share and see if we can get back to it. Yep, there we go. There's our QR code. If uh, you can't get access to this, Sean, we'll drop this in the chat, the link here. Um, basically why I put this in, we spend hundreds to thousands of dollars a month to give good value. I get interviewed every week for, yes, we spend many dollars. I get interviewed every week by a professional copywriter on tips and tricks for video, gala video, and and everything to do with video, number one. And then number two, we have probably about five days a week, a new YouTube short every single day comes out on YouTube. So that's a direct link, not even to our YouTube, to our YouTube shorts. We want to add value. We know there's not a big, we know that not everybody's ready for us yet. And we want to get you ready for us. So every single day, you'll see a behind the scenes clip, every single weekday, a behind the scenes clip, an in-depth breakdown on some of our biggest uh, successes, but also our biggest failures on uh, on my LinkedIn profile and on our YouTube Shorts platform. So subscribe, like, just it's value. It's not silly at all. It's like value every day. And we try really hard to do that. Well, you get to stare at this face all day. This one right here. So, well, who wouldn't want to do that? <laughs> Put your hands down, guys. Back there. Um, I saw a question about a, a gimbal. Uh, awesome. By far the best, DJI by far the sturdiest, uh, by Sean far the best prices as well. So I wanted to answer that question for you quick. A gimbal is just a robot arm that keeps your camera stable for your non-technical. That's all. I love okay. it. I love it. Y'all, that was amazing. Didn't I tell you that was going to be good, y'all? Can can y'all throw some love in the chat before we get into these questions? Because what? Y'all got me. I was out here learning, talking about rule of thirds. I'm sitting here in the background trying to figure out the right angle, just trying to put it together. Okay. That was incredible. So I want to get into some of these questions because we have a lot, a lot, a lot. You got people asking here, how do we find you? How do we pay you? How do we hire you? Scan the QR code, y'all. They gave you a QR code for a reason. So make sure you scan that, okay? Oh, All right. So a couple of good questions. What uh, This is from um, Kalitza Gibbs. What advice do you have for empowering the population um, our nonprofit is serving when addressing the problem. It, uh, in trying to avoid the miscasting of the hero, so our nonprofit does not have a savior complex. And I think that that kind of aligns with a couple of other questions. In other words, of how do we go from the idea of lifting up as opposed to um, misusing a story in a way, or, or um, you know, like they said, making the nonprofit be the savior in a way? Yeah. And before you get into that, we put up the QR code. It's over here. Here. <laughs> if you need it, we'll just leave it up there for a minute. Go ahead, man. Um, the, when, when we say the word hero, uh, we tend to think of a savior complex, right? Mm -hmm. But think about your uh, Star Wars, right? The, the no, Star Wars is a bad example, so forget it. Um, the person with the problem is actually the hero person with the problem is the hero, not the person that's guiding that individual on how to get better. So we typically within like this, that concern over the savior complex, um, uh, you don't pick the person who has, oh, they've got the money and they came in and gave the money and that fixed the problem. That's not 
what that that's not who, who the hero gen, genuinely is right you think of finding nemo the hero in that story is the father who's a hot mess and and his guides along the way are these other people that that come in and fill, fill in those gaps so for your organization the donor that's giving money not the hero a guide a guide in that in the, the way the story flows the um no i think that's good enough i don't want to go go on and on and on is that yeah. is that good that's does that make solid. sense yeah i love that i love that um arnold king asks what is meant by studying the problem too late starting the problem too late um so what we do when uh if you don't have a problem people will tune out <clears throat> and if you think about back to finding nemo it's just sorry disney pixar is so great at this why can't marlin the father just go and find nemo why does he get attacked by three sharks then swallowed by a whale then swallowed by a pelican every single scene a new problem is introduced he's in a field of jellyfish now what <laughs> why is there a problem every single scene because if there's no problem we stop paying attention so with our our culture and getting hit with like six thousand pieces three to six thousand pieces a day of marketing how are you going to get people to go past their defense mechanisms and stop the scroll and just pay attention right if you introduce a problem in your story you're not going to do it with like hi i'm john and i do this for 9.99 come on down no one's going to pay attention you're already blocked out your white noise so start the problem early introduce the problem early and the trick that we use that we talked about earlier is a cold open which is the the five seconds of your 10 seconds of your most dramatic statement that is just going to hook somebody in and then have them introduce that character and then have them clearly articulate the problem that they were facing spend some time there before you resolve and, it, and just know that as soon as you resolve and you say like and that was it they solved my problem your your audience is gone just in the way of a quick example for Jason, when he told his story, um, the way that I would have opened that up was, I hated what I did. I didn't know who I wa who I was, mm. and I didn't know how to continue. Now he could have just started if you know right after Floyd kicked it over to us. If he was just like listing those three things right away, and then step back and be like, so my story starts in two thousand seven. So it's okay out of context to state the problem right out of the gate um, because that's what's going to capture, well, did he find himself? Is he happy now? Did he get a different job? State the problem first. If you can do that really, really well, the rest of the story builds up on that problem. You'll revisit the problem later on. So do it immediately. This is good. Jen, I'm thank seeing you for a... checking our website, by the way, Jen. Appreciate that. <laughs> I'm seeing if you're a lot get that of... Questions we have okay, we have almost 30 questions. So I'm like, okay, I'm seeing a lot of questions about around people not understanding the hero. I think we need to dive a little bit deeper into that. People are talking sure. about miscasting the hero idea. If the hero isn't the donor, if it's not the nonprofit, who is the hero? There's like a lot of questions about that. Can you guys just kind of go a little bit more in depth with that? Absolutely. Um, so I always tell people like the, the easiest way and you can expand on this because it's different uh in, in different scenarios but the hero is the person that the nonprofit serves in most cases the mm. end user the end recipient of care is typically the hero someone that you've served and we'll only tell the success stories because in in most cases because uh we don't want to leave people with a, a sour we don't want to guilt people we don't want to do the Sally Struthers, you know, sort of like unresolved problems, only you can help. Yeah, with the Martina McBride song playing in the background. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's reason for that, but really it just, the person that you serve and that has successfully come through your program and maybe a success story, even if it's three, five, 10 years back, we did one uh, a year or two ago where the person was 20 years removed from the program. They were an adult, but they were able to relive their experience. Uh, of what it was like to, to to be in that situation again and how the guide, the nonprofit, the organization was was helping them. Yeah. So I'll just do it in the way of example. We did a story um, for an organization that helps kids that have medical issues and there's no medical service. Uh, this, the hero of the story, because you got to be really careful with kids, right? So the hero of the story was the father 
who was taking his kid from doctor to doctor to doctor and everyone was saying no one can help him. The organization that helped this, this man, um, they positioned themselves as someone who was able to come in and tell him how to fix the problem and help him with his kid. But the hero was the dad. So he wouldn't have been able to solve the problem on his own. Every good hero can't solve their own problem. They need a guide, right? Which is what you want your organization to be seen as. I'm on. Um, and <laughs> the, the father then uh, was able to not only take that counsel, but then he walks out with that. And I, I use this word, I, it's a religious word, but I think it holds weight. It gave him honor. It gave him the ability to... to uh, show his self-worth because he actually was the one that solved the problem in finding the organization in taking his kid and making the decision to trust them. And so he becomes the hero of the story because he solved the problem having listened to their information or partake partaking in one of their programs. Hmm. So um, is that, love, is that clearing I, it up? I'm going to, I love that. And we only have a couple more minutes, so I'm going to just bamf on that and then go to the close, but I want everyone to hear what Matt just said. And I think that this is a perfect note to actually end on. He said that every hero needs a guide. What do we talk about in every single one of our webinars? Our job as organizations, our job as fundraisers are we are facilitators. Your job is to create space for transformation to take place, right? You create space for transformation to take place. You are not the hero. You are not here to empower anybody. You're not here to lift anybody up. They are already doing that work on their own by existing. You are coming alongside them and you are partnering with them. That is the purpose of community. Community exists so that everyone can be their best, whether you're a donor being your best, whether you're in the organization, or whether you're the end recipient. It's all about them doing and being their best. And your job now is being a facilitator so their best can take place, okay? And I love that. Infuse that into your storytelling. Infuse that into your fundraising practices. Infuse that into your marketing and communications. Focus on that. Don't focus on being your own star, okay? We can, we can only shine as bright as everyone else shining bright with us and around us, okay? So I want to say thank you a beard and bowler okay because y'all did that thing y'all shower them with some love in that chat thank you all so much and remember y'all we are going to send these slides take a look at that qr code okay because that is how you're going to be able to keep in and stay in touch with them and we're going to share some of those questions with you guys okay so maybe you guys can do some more extra content and whatnot but thank y'all I love thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you for having thank us. So and much. if you want to see Matt in a butter costume no QR code my LinkedIn profile, it is there today. Drop some love. We'd love to hear it. <laughs> I love it. Y'all, before we close, I just want to say thank you guys so much. We have an amazing giveaway, seven steps to developing your story portfolio. So when you get these slides, y'all, make sure you go ahead and take advantage of that and download that. And again, stay in touch with our boys. They were amazing. Beard and Bowler, they did that today. Important reminders, register for our upcoming webinars, y'all. We have a special surprise for you next month, okay? A very special surprise for you. So make sure you register for August webinar. Fill out our feedback survey. Keep letting us know how everything is going. And join our Facebook fam, y'all. If y'all not in the fam, I don't know what you're doing. You ain't, you, ain't, you ain't doing it right. Join our Facebook fam. We give away actual donations every single month from our team. It's a great community. So keep in, in the loop. Y'all, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining. We are grateful, grateful, grateful for you all. And we cannot wait to see you again next month. Thank you all so much. And have a good one, y'all.